First, today I'm going to be talking about the Suntering Ruler, Allison Glass Sunprints 2020 fabrics. The book reviews will be for several quilt and garment patterns. I'll be demonstrating how to put a zipper in an exterior seam, and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I see Denise is watching from Pennsylvania, Sophia from Texas, Charlie from Connecticut. So thank you everyone so much for tuning in. I'm really excited to be here with you tonight. Just a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And also everything that I'm scheduled to talk about I link to in the description, so if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, books, fabrics, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So jumping into my favorite, the notion of the week is this cool little flexible centering ruler by EK Tools. This ruler was actually sent to me by a viewer. Um, I have the, the worst short-term memory, but I believe it was Sharon. Um, this is really nifty for fussy cutting, um, applique, machine embroidery, whatever you're doing if you need to center your design on the project. So I'm going to pop over to the side camera and show you how this nifty little ruler works. All right, so I pulled a piece of fabric out that I'd like to fussy cut this big floral in the middle of the fabric. Um, obviously, your regular quilting ruler will get the job done also, but um, I saw a few photos recently on social media. One in particular popped into my head um, of Disney fabric. Someone was trying to fussy cut, and I think their measurements were a little off because they were fussy cutting. They actually started cutting like right up to the edge of the design where, you know, obviously you need to leave seam allowance or leave a little bit of extra background fabric. So I thought this uh, centering ruler might have helped with that. So the centering ruler is a little different than uh, the regular quilting ruler and that it starts with zero in the middle of the ruler and it also has uh, two different uh, measurements. So the inches are the bigger uh, increments over here. So if, if I wanted to fussy cut this flower, I'm going to aim for the center of this rose over here, slide that up to the top and say if I needed for my project a piece that was uh, 12 inches long by 6 inches tall. Um, I'd start with the zero. Uh, 12 is a pretty easy increment to, to figure out on this ruler, six and six. Um, so this is where I would cut out my fabric and then I'd just make it obviously six inches tall. So again, um, the centering ruler, it's, it's pretty interesting. I like that it's flexible and um, yeah, definitely helpful for fussy cutting your projects and um, embroidery or like I mentioned, applique and other things. So I have a question for you right away. I always like to know what people are doing for their bags. Uh, do you usually try to fussy cut fabric, your fabric design on the center of the bag? So if you're like me um, and you like large scale prints like this orange print that I showed, um, I always try to get the, the big center of the print in the middle of my project. Sometimes with smaller prints, um, not as necessary or sort of tossed prints where there's a design all over and it, it's um, in all directions, so upside down, sideways, and all that. That's what I mean by toss prints. Sometimes it's not as vital for that. Um, but let me know what you think um, if you're usually fussy cutting uh, fabrics for your bag. So I've been collecting a lot of fabrics in the sewing room, new fabrics that I've been waiting to show you. I still have a huge stack on the floor, um, which is good because last year I remember there was a time where I was running out of fabric that I was purchasing in order to show you on the show. Now. In the current situation, I have more than enough and actually fabric waiting in line, so um, it's definitely a good thing. I'm gonna show you Allison Glass Sun Prints. Um, this is from the 2020 line. And Allison has been doing different um, styles and colorations of what she calls her Sun Prints line for a few years now, so she's gotten quite a collection. And this is the latest set. Here's the side view of all the different colors. Very pretty. I'm gonna flip through all of them just so you can see all the prints. So. What I like in particular about Allison's prints is she always uses kind of a not, a, not exactly a white on white, but definitely a white background with um, a very light 
um, design prints. So these two, I really like these, especially for maybe a background fabric for a quilt. And some of these are new designs and some of them are just different colorations of past designs. And they're all, for the most part, monochromatic or just with a little bit of accent color. So this print is really cool. It's kind of like a cross stitch design. There's a little bee. I think I see a little dog over here. So that one's really cute. I like the bright colors. So this is one of my favorite colors from the line. And yeah, they look, they look so bright. The hues look so bright in person. I'm really pleased with these fabrics. Um, this orange one looks gorgeous. I really love this one a lot too. So I like using these for lining. So if I'm working with um, a main print and I need a lining fabric, I don't necessarily always order, actually I seldom order um, main prints with a coordinating fabric from the same fabric line. I, I generally buy a main print and then try to work with something for the lining from my stash. And so that's where these particular types of fabrics come in handy. And they're also great for working on quilt blocks. I like using solids or um, blenders that read almost as solids for my quilts and so these would work for those as well. So um, I did buy one yard cuts just because I was planning on using these for linings a lot of the time. Um, you can find yardage or smaller bundles like uh, fat quarter and I believe also fat eighth bundles and I purchased these from Allison Glass's website so she's got a lot of cool things. I was eyeing some new threads that she just stocked so um, and she's got a lot of brilliant quilt plat patterns on her site as well. All right, so we're getting to the last two designs. And again, this fabric line is called Sun Prince 2020, and it was designed by Allison Glass. All right, um, Danny's favorite part of the Sunday show, we'd like to invite all the bag makers to stand proud, let us know in the comments, and Danny added this. I don't remember who recommended the So Sweetness Squad, but it's kind of a cool name. So Danny added this to the graphic today. He's been playing around with a few of the graphics. Um, he got some new technology for the live shows, so he's having fun with his new toy. Um, I wanted to share with you, not that this is sewing related, but I'm, I guess, um, wondering, I know there's gardeners who sew in quilt as well, and so I've, I'm not a planter and I'm not someone who can typically keep plants alive, but I picked up a few plants for the new house. They're currently residing with us in our old house, but um, some of the plants that I picked up were really good air cleaners, so take, taking a lot of toxins out of the air, but these two were my favorites and I also wanted to share with you, I got this little one for Flash's Tank. These are succulents and actually they just started blooming the other day, so I guess they like it in Flash's Tank. She took a little bite off of one of these dark purple succulents the other day. They're, they're completely okay for her to eat, which is why I put them in there. But um, yeah, that's Flash's little plant. Um, I'm, I've had these plants for about six weeks now. Really happy that they're still alive, to be honest. I check them every day. I try to use either bottled water, or not bottled water, distilled water, or I leave the tap water sitting out for a day or two before I use it because um, when I first got the plants, I just used water straight from the tap. And we live in Chicago, and I think there might have been something, maybe the fluoride in the water that wasn't agreeing with some of them. I had a couple of the plants, the tips of the leaves turned brown, so I Googled it and I found out that that might be the reason. But um, these two are my favorites. This one has sort of green leaves with kind of like a white frost finish. And this one, the leaves are really thick, the stems are thick. This one's called green peperomia. So I'm still experimenting with where to keep them in the house as far as um, what light they might like the best. But um, yeah, I'm, yeah, like I said, I'm very happy that they're still alive and Flash has her little cute plant that I'm gonna be putting back in her tank. So um, if you are an experienced gardener and have any suggestions for me rega in regarding to beginner friendly plants or plants that don't need a lot of care or attention, even though I've been checking up on these guys every day, um, I'm not very good at this kind of thing and I'm kind of new to it. So if you have any suggestions for me, let me know in the comments, just some basic easy things that I can do or um, new plants that I can pick up for the house. Um, so with that being said, um, what is your favorite flower or plant? 
let me know in the comments. Um, I really like sunflowers a lot um, for how they look and also for the seeds that they produce. Um, what other plants do I like a lot? Um, yeah, roses are beautiful as well. So let me know. I'm curious to see what um, everybody's favorite plants are and I can see your comments coming through already. So thank you for participating in our live shows in that in that manner. All right, so in, well, I guess, kind of in lieu of the book review for this week, I have one book, two garment patterns, and uh, a quilt table runner pattern that I've added to my stash. So I'm going to jump over to the side camera, show you those patterns. Um, they're pretty brief, so not a whole ton to show you with them, but I thought it would be interesting to share the um, project photos and the pattern covers and things like that. So um, the first book that I have to share with you is called Fancy Flock, and this is from Sweet Briar Sisters. I shared another book from them maybe a year or two ago. It was a book with um, hatchlings, so eggs that you sew with zippers so the eggs open and little fun creatures that went inside. There was a little dragon, a chick, um, all sorts of really cute things, especially with Easter coming up. But this one's called Fancy Flock. So as you can see, these are all different birds. I super love the ostrich and I'm actually curious what type of fabric that is because I'd, I'd really like to make the ostrich. So I'm just going to flip through a small amount of pages because most of the, the pages have lots of pattern pieces and instructions on them. Um, but I just wanted to give you some more photos and show some of the projects up close. And I definitely noticed that this goose has some sort of leather or vinyl for the, the beak and the legs, which looks really cool. I really like that a lot. Here's that ostrich again. Um, there's different accessories that you can add to the birds. Here's another page with some more photos. Uh, the Canadian goose, um, very, very cute. They look relatively easy to put together and I apologize for not having more photos, but like I said, most of the pages had uh, pattern pieces on them, but um, this is Fancy Flock and there's instructions for five different types of birds and all of their little accessories like the crowns, the tutus and all of that. So the next um, project, I guess, booklet that I have to share with you is called Wintertime Shimmer. Uh, it's a shimmer quilt and table runner. So I really liked um, the design and actually the fabric choices for these. It's actually a little um, sort of folder booklet type thing. All the pattern pieces are included. And here's the booklet again. I'm just going to be showing a couple pages because most of the uh, pattern pieces or instructions are on the pages, but just so you can see what the projects look in detail. So um, this is the shimmer quilt. Love the cardinal. I'll probably be making this one first. And the table runner, which you can see over here, um, this, the trees are applique on there and then the background is uh, pieced. And I think I have one more page bookmarked. Yes. Okay. So there's the, the cardinal quilt again. Um, in a bigger view. So um, the instructions looked relatively easy to understand, put together. I like the, that the pattern pieces are separate and that it comes in this little folder with the, the flap so you can keep everything organized. And this one's called Wintertime uh, Shimmer Quilt and Table Runner. And then the garment patterns that I picked up are both from Closet Case Patterns. Um, this is a top and a dress and this is a skirt. And I'm going to flip to the back so you can see what the views are. Um, so multiple views for each. I really liked the asymmetrical skirt over here. I'll probably make that one first and I liked um, this version but the top and actually Danny's got a few photographs from the designer's website Closet Case Patterns and um, here's some of the actual pictures um, on real life people. So there's that skirt that I was um, eyeing up a second ago. It looks really great, really cute. I like that one too. I like that it's uh, sort of flowy, a little bit flowy. There's the dress and there was also um, the top. I think we showed the top at the beginning of the picture. So anyway, lots of fun projects, uh, garments, quilting. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, to share with you some of the, the booklets and patterns that I've been picking up lately. So the demonstration for tonight is something that I've had several requests for. Various people have asked me recently for how to add a zipper to the outside of a bag for um, in the side seam for various items, um, glasses, case, wallet, um, just an extra zipper pocket uh, that's kind of embedded in the seam. So before I jump over to the side camera and show you the demonstration, 
my demonstration fabrics are for the Tudor bag. So in essence, putting a zipper pocket in the seam so that you can access it from the exterior. So this will be a vertical zipper. In the demonstration, again, this is the bag pattern that I'm using for that. I also wanted to grab this widget bag off my shelf and compare the two and just kind of talk through how you would attach uh, a zipper in the seam for a different type of bag. So in the, the Tudor bag, this bag has front, back, side panels, and a bottom panel. So all these pieces are straight seams. For, the, for a bag such as the widget, I'm gonna flip to the back. Um, as you'll notice, the side panel kind of wraps around the whole entire bag. It's still possible to insert a zipper in a bag that's similar to this where the side panel wraps all the way around. Um, you'll just need to, um, for both of these projects or any project that you're working on, you'll be working through the pattern until you get to the part where you start assembling the exterior of the bag. So in the Tudor bag's case, um, you'll start adding the front of the back to the side panels. In the widget's case, when you get to the part where you'll be attaching the front and back of the bag to the side panel that wraps around, you'll pin the whole thing, but you'll just sew this straight edge, this long straight edge where ideally you'll be inserting the zipper into the seam. So you'll just sew this straight portion first so that the rest of the piece can be left flat. You'll take out your, your pins and then you'll be inserting the zipper according to my demonstration. So I just wanted to let you know that it works for several different types of bags, not only a bag like the Tudor bag where um, the pieces are assembled one at a time and there's bottom panels and side panels and all that. So let me jump over to the side camera and show you I've got some step outs prepared. Um, I'm not sure, Danny, if you'll need to zoom back out. I think you will. Okay, so here's that Tudor bag that I was just showing you and I've got pattern pieces cut out. So this is the front of the bag and this is my side panel and I'm going to be inserting the zipper into the seam where the front and the side panel meet. So I just wanted to show you those pieces. Again, you'll be sewing the bag in according to the instructions for whatever bag you're making. Um, and then my next step out is I've sewn the, the front of the bag, the main panel to the side panel um, according to the pattern, so according to the seam allowance. Um, let me just flip this to the side, however. So, uh, let me grab my notes. Um, so, a few things that I wanted to mention before I get into the rest of the details of assembling this. So, your zipper opening should be at least two inches shorter than the height of the pieces that you're sewing together. So, in my case, I just needed to measure this. This is 13 and a half inches tall. So the zipper opening is going to be 11 and a half inches or smaller. So if you'd like a really small zipper opening, um, that's up to you. I just cut mine just one inch shorter on top and bottom. Um, the zipper can be at least the same height of your panels or longer. In my demonstration portions, I'm working with a zipper that's much longer and I'm just gonna trim it down. So let me flip this down again. If you'll notice, there's a blue thread up here and down here, and then the middle is red thread that I've stitched. Uh, I stitched this right up before the show. So the blue thread I sewed using a regular stitch length, and I stitched only one inch on the top and the bottom. And in the case of the Tudor bag, according to the pattern, you needed to leave the bottom open. So I counted for that and just added an extra inch. So um, that's what I did here. The red thread over here I lengthened my stitch length to a basting stitch. So on my sewing machine, I lengthened the red stitches to four millimeters. So again, the blue thread is just my regular stitch length and the red thread is um, the longer basting stitches. Okay, so you'll, you'll press the seam open and you wanna press it really, really good to give a nice flat foundation for um, attaching the zipper. Okay, so the zipper, that I'm working with again is a little bit longer than uh, the fabric panels in the bag. Oops, sorry, that's blurry. Hang on one second, Danny's fixing this. All right, there we go. Okay, so your zipper pocket pieces, and you can see I've cut two pieces right here for my zipper pocket, that's the green fabric. The pocket pieces should be the length of the opening plus five eighths of an inch. So if I bring my 
piece over here, um, the red thread, that's the length of my opening, and then I just added 5 eighths of an inch. It needs to be a little bit longer so that we can um, close up the sides and the bottom of the zipper. Okay, so what I did with that, um, I measured the length that I needed for the opening, and I just wanted a small pocket. So my pocket's just six inches wide. You can make it as, as wide as you want, um, but I just settled on six inches. It seemed like a good, um, good amount. So let me flip to the right side of the zipper. Using my zipper foot, I sewed the right side of the fabric to the wrong side of the zipper. So here's my right side of the zipper. That's what it looks like. And then here's what it looks like from the wrong side of the zipper. So I pressed the fabrics away from the zipper so that it was nice and open like this. And then let me grab my other piece. Okay, so this piece that we pressed open before, we're going to be actually make sure that your zipper head is at the top um, because I, I feel like most people would like the zipper to open from top to bottom. And I'm going to be applying some Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape on the zipper. So the right side of the zipper I'm going to be gluing uh, to the fabric. You can use a glue stick as well if you prefer. And here's my Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape and I'm just going to be attaching it to the long edges of the zipper tape. So I'm going to start laying it down about a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inches away from the edge of the zipper pocket fabric, so not all the way to the end. And then same thing on the other long edge. Okay, so I'm going to use my fingernail to peel back the paper to reveal the second side of the adhesive. And then I'm gonna flip my zipper so that it's the right side is against the seam. So I'm going to orient the zipper teeth so that they fall right on top of the seam. And you can just do a visual check on the top and the bottom. That's the easiest way to see if you've got it lined up correctly. And you're going to center it on the opening. So I'm going to start the zipper pocket fabric if you'll see my basting stitches over there, that'll give you a reference for where to start laying it down. So basically I've got the adhesive where those basting stitches start. Okay, so I'm just pushing this down. You can use a bit of heat from your iron. And if you feel more comfortable, you can always check by inserting a pin through the center of the zipper teeth poking it out the other end and just verifying that your teeth are more or less centered on that seam. Okay, so now it's time to take this over to the sewing machine and since I'm not able to sew live on camera, I've got a step out over here and let me just explain to you what I've done in order to get this top stitched over here. So I'm flipping to the back side. Again, I have my zipper um, taped with the Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape on top of the seam. I put a traditional pin an inch down and an inch up from the outer edge of the pocket. So the top stitching isn't going all the way to the end because we need the ends kind of free to close up the pocket. So the top stitching um, is going to be completed from the right side of the fabric, um, but I wanted to show you the pins on the wrong side. So when I flip over, um, you can see what I did with the top stitching. So you want the, the pocket fabric spread open. You don't want them um, bunched up or bundled up on the inside. Ask me how I know because I did that myself and Danny had to rip some seams before the show. Um, but you can see my pin over here sticking through. This is where you're going to start the top stitching on either end. We're just going to top stitch the long edges and I'm top stitching 3 eighths of an inch away from the seam in the center. So this is um, a little bit bigger of a top stitching area. I lengthened my stitch length to 3 millimeters for this top stitching. And when the top stitching is finished, you're gonna flip to the wrong side, remove those two pins, and then we're going to be sewing the sides and the bottom of the zipper pocket fabric. So you're just going to bring the pocket fabrics so that they're wrong sides together, uh, sorry, right sides together. And you're going to sew the three raw edges using a quarter of an inch seam. And I found I had an easier time if I sewed up from this direction, just sewed one line of stitches, flipped it over, sewed the other side and then I sewed the bottom. So it was three independent um, lines of stitches 
you'll, if you have any zipper excess, you'll trim the excess, but make sure that the head, of course, is inside before you close up the sides and do the, the trimming. And here's what the pocket looks like after um, the three raw edges are stitched. Okay, so a couple last steps. First, let me trim that zipper. Oh, I just cut that head off. Obviously, you won't be doing that. Um, so one more thing we need to do is use a seam ripper and we're going to remove those basting stitches. So they're, they're, the basting stitches were there for a reason. I'm just going to go ahead and take my seam ripper and slide it through and you can hear all those basting stitches coming out. And there's your zipper, it's hidden, but you know, obviously yours will have a pull, I just cut mine off. Um, but this is a really quick and easy way to add a zipper in your exterior seam and then as you're assembling your bag, um, you have the zipper um, handy and over there and um, you can put it in any side seam or uh, whichever area of the bag that you'd like to have it in. So um, now let me grab my notebook. All right, hope you enjoyed that demonstration. And again, it's um, an easy way to put a zipper, uh, a vertical zipper in your bag or pouch. All right, so before we get over to questions, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway. So if you have any questions for me, go ahead and type those in the comments right now. Bag making questions, questions about a uh, notion or tool, uh, general sewing questions, go ahead and type those in the comments right now, either on YouTube or Facebook. Um, however, the winner of last week's giveaway was Juliet. Um, I feel like I'm going to mispronounce the last name, L-U-I-K-S. Congratulations to Juliet. Uh, I've already contacted Juliet on social media and I've actually heard back already from Juliet. So congratulations to Juliet. And we have another giveaway at the end of the show. All right, Danny's been collecting some questions for me, I see. Kelly says, what keeps that pocket from moving all around on the inside? Um, so the reason that I had, so normally my zipper pockets, I um, put them together a little bit differently. Um, they're more or less either hanging um, up or down. For this particular zipper pocket, I had cut two independent pieces of fabric. And so when it's inside the bag, it's uh, kind of sandwiched in between the exterior layer and the lining. So um, it's oriented in a way that, um, I don't know, I don't know the words I'm trying to describe, but um, hopefully you can see from the way that it's oriented, the pockets not falling down or getting in the way of anything else and your lining will just uh, come down uh, right against the wrong side of the zipper pocket fabric. Shelly says, would you, need to, would you need to increase the seam allowance? Um, you can just use the seam allowance as called for in the pattern. For this particular demonstration, I use a half inch seam because that's what the Tudor bag um, example that I use called for in the instructions. Um, if a bag calls for um, a quarter of an inch, that will work as well. Um, yeah, I tried to stick to uh, the same increments as the pattern that I was showing. Iris says, vertical zipper pouch, would you anchor the top so the pocket stays in place or, um, I feel like you don't have to. Um, I feel like it's, it's not going to be falling down. Like I mentioned, the lining will be smashed up against the wrong side of the pocket. And as your lining will be holding other things that will just kind of um, push that pocket nice and flat against the wrong side of your exterior. Um, Kim says, how often do you oil your Juki? So I used to oil my Juki um, after every project and then after every other project. Uh, a few years ago, I took the Juki in for a tune-up and my sewing machine um, mechanics said I was oiling way too much. So I oil, granted I don't sew as often as I used to. Um, I oil maybe once a week um, if you're sewing more often. Um, I'm certainly not sewing every day. Um, I'm lucky if I sew once or twice a week. So if you're sewing more often, you may need to oil your juki more often. You can always check with your sewing machine mechanic though. I try to take my machine in every about every year and a half uh, just for a tune up um, to catch any problems before they get bigger. Brenda says, how do you know whether a faux leather is of good quality? Um, 
I don't know. That's a tough one. I feel like it's, um, I don't know. First of all, when you go to the store, I when I go to the store, I try to steer away from any faux leathers that have a fuzzy white backing, like a fleece-like backing. Um, I like steering clear of those types of faux leathers or vinyls because a lot of times I like to um, raw cut my um, straps or accents on the bag and if it has like a fleecy white backing, um, sometimes that can show when the bag is finished. Um, so I like to find um, a faux leather with either like a canvas-like backing uh, or a mesh backing. Um, uh, you might want to take, uh, get purchase a smaller piece first or if you can buy a sample swatch, uh, run it through your sewing machine to test it uh, with your Teflon foot, see how it works out with your um, interfacing choices. Um, testing out before you begin on your actual project is never a bad option. And then you can also tinker with some things like your stitch length and your um, sewing machine foot um, pressure. Beth says, uh, Sarah, I hear you talk about blender fabrics. Can you explain what those are? Um, yeah, that's a great question. So when I say blender fabrics or um, monochromatic fabrics, let me grab another one. Um, so blender fabrics kind of refer to, I wish I had my Tula Pink fabric in here. We've already actually moved that out of the way. So blender fabrics, I usually mean are either small scale prints or monochromatic. So when you look at something like this, this is like a smaller scale print or blender fabric meant to blend in with larger prints. So Tula Pink in particular does a really good job with her fabric lines. She chooses equal increments of fabrics in a fabric line that are small, sc small scale pl prints or blenders, a medium scale print, and then a large scale print. So they all work together for, um, especially she has quilters in mind um, when she designs her fabrics so that when you're cutting the fabrics up, you have a variety of different scales of um, the designs. Um, by blender fabrics, I also sometimes mean like monochromatic prints, such as what most of these were. Um, monochromatic meaning um, the same color families, like different shades in this case of purple. So this one has two shades of purple. So um, that's just what I mean by blender fabrics, um, usually the smaller scale prints in a fabric line. Rebecca says, what is the stiletto tool used for? I bought one, but I'm not sure when to use it. So that's a really great question. I have, let's see. I sometimes use my precision turning tool as a stiletto. So a stiletto, um, th the main thing for me for using a stiletto is when you're sewing through a curve. So for instance, if you're sewing um, a zipper to fabric, but through a curve, instead of using your fingers to hold the layers, obviously you have it pinned together with wonder clips, but as you get closer to the actual portion that you're sewing, you need to take the wonder clips out. And so instead of using your hands, uh, which might get dicey if your finger kind of gets too close to the needle, you can use a stiletto or the precision turning tool. Some stilettos have a pointy edge, like the By Annie stiletto. It has um, um, a metal edge, but it's pointy. Um, you would use this tip to hold the layers as they go through your sewing machine so that you don't have to use your fingers. And um, this is kind of like an actual sixth finger when sewing your layers. Uh, Marilyn says, do you need to use an invisible zipper for that side pocket? So you can use an invisible zipper if you prefer. For my example, I just use a regular number three skirt zipper. But if you like it to be um, more of an invisible look with um, the tape not showing, you can do that. Honestly, I just didn't want to break out my invisible zipper foot because I have no idea where it is. <laughs> Janice says, how long is your Omni ruler? So I like two different size rulers. One of them is not um, within easy reach right now. So I like the 12 inch by six inch ruler for smaller cuts. And then I also have a six inch by 24 inch ruler. I actually originally bought a 24 inch by six and a half inch. And that extra half inch really screwed me up um, in a lot of measurements. So I had to replace it with uh, 24 by six inch. But yeah, those are the two rulers that I have. Um, Sandy says, do you ever use a hump jumper? Um, I have in the past. I do have a couple of them um, in my sewing cabinet, also known as a Gina Majig. It helps you um, cross thick layers, um, such as, uh, you know, the as the name says for the Gina Majig, if you're hemming jeans, um, you can probably feel, especially if you're wearing jeans every day, um, that side seam 
um, is really, really thick. So that helps navigate those really thick seams so that you get an even stitch across um, the thick seam as well as the rest of the, um, the layers. Camilla says, where do I buy the wool ironing mat? I have the 13 by 13 inch, but really need a larger one. So we do stock the 17 inch by 17 inch wool mats. Um, I think we just ran out today, actually. Um, we have more on order, um, so we should getting be getting more of those in soon. I really like the 17 inch by 17 inch size is, is my favorite size. Susie says, hi, Sarah and Danny. This is Sandy Olson from Minnesota, visiting my sister from Florida. Um, are you going to make a bigger widget pattern? So I, um, I don't know, I guess I hadn't thought of that. Um, for now, the widget is just available in the one size, but I'll keep that in mind for um, a future pattern. Teresa says, how do you calculate how much fabric you will need when you are creating a bag? Is there some formula you use or are you just using your best guess? So that's a really great question. When I first design a pattern, I am using my best guess. Some designers use um, their software to lay out all the fabric pieces, such as Adobe Illustrator on a yard of fabric. Um, so they make a rectangle that's 36 inches by 44 inches and then lay all their pattern pieces out and see if they need to add another yard or, or what have you. I start with a basic um, estimate, then when I actually sew the bag together, um, because I mostly have all one yard pieces in my stash, um, I cut out all my pieces and then I see how much I have left over and then I kind of bump it up a little bit to be conservative because you never know what types of fabrics people will be using for fussy cutting or if they're using a stripe and trying to match things. So um, I always go off of what I actually cut and then I bump it up a little bit just to account for um, different layouts or um, for cutting errors, things like that. Um, would an invisible zipper be recommended? Uh, yes, you can use for that um, vertical side pocket an invisible zipper if you prefer. You'll just need to use, obviously, the invisible zipper foot. Carla says, uh, what is the graffiti fabric? Um, this is designed by Alexander Henry. It's called Tag Your It. Um, sorry, when I said you needed to use your invisible zipper foot, you could either use an invisible zipper foot or you could iron uh, the teeth away and use your your regular zipper foot on your machine. Um, Cindy says, when using cork, do you still fuse with uh, woven interfacing and use fusible foam? So that's a great question. Um, I have, I don't recommend ironing on cork a lot. Um, I like to keep the integrity of the fabric. Um, so when possible, I do finger press. However, I have made a couple of bags in the past where I have gently ironed interfacing to the wrong side of the cork. The airplane bag comes to mind where I had a piece of so in Paltex that I fused um, around the seam allowance with uh, Shape Flux. So I have ironed it in the past. Um, I generally like to, with the foam interfacings, just machine baste the, the foam to the cork fabric, if that helps. Virginia says, I've just started working with cork. Should I use a stabilizer such as SF-101 or does it need it? So it depends on what bag you're making, what type of look you're going for. If you're looking for a structured bag, I generally tend to use the foam interfacing or whatever foam interfacing it, that's called for in the pattern. If you're looking for a slouchier bag, such as a hobo bag, uh, maybe a thinner interfacing like fleece might be okay. Um, if you're ever not sure, you can always email me and we can talk about it and um, find a solution, something that you're comfortable with. Uh, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. Um, I did answer that one already, Danny. Um, all right, Susan says, maybe make the pocket the same size as the side panel and then include it in the seam of the back panel. Uh, uh, yeah, you could sure do that too. Um, you could certainly um, have your um, zipper pocket opening extend all the way from top to bottom. Gloria says, when will you get the boards for the pet carrier? Um, we actually just received those. I'll be relisting re those on the website tomorrow. Um, we got a few different um, thicknesses for the boards at different prices and in a different material, um, if that helps, a little bit cheaper. Um, what is the name of the similar product as ShapeFlex that is 45 inches wide instead of 20 inches? Um, great question. It's called Woven Fuse. I don't carry it on my website, um, but you can find it online. Renee says, are you going to have your Windy City Bags book back on your website uh, soon, I th think? I know we do for sure have some of those in stock still. Um, I know I sold, signed one the other day. 
Um, if you're talking about big city bags, that one's out of print, been out of print for a couple years, but the ebook version is still available. I'll check Windy City Bags after the show. Um, it should still be in stock though. Iris says, do you know a good Juki dealer to buy near O'Hare who is a good mechanic as well? Um, it's actually right near our house. They sell um, several brands of machines. It's on Irving Park Road. Danny, do you remember the name of it? I think it's called Singer Factory. Factory Direct. Singer Factory Direct, something like that. But it is on Irving Park Road um, in near Chicago. Uh, it's near Six Corners, if you're familiar with the city, and they also do sewing machine repairs. And I actually, the last time I was in there, they had their whole back room, like I kind of like peeked in, like shelves upon shelves of people's machines that they had brought in for um, repairs. So um, they must do a lot of business over there. They had a lot of great machines, and uh, they did have the Jukies as well as some Juki Industrials that I was taking a look at, but um, um, have not bought one yet. Sharon says, did you use a size four and a half zipper or a number three zipper? So on the demonstration bag, I did use a um, number three dress skirt zipper. I don't see why you couldn't use um, the four and a half or number five handbag zipper for that as well. Do you combine two together. Uh, Danny says he's combining two together. Okay, how do you avoid zipper warping? And was there another one you were gonna post? Yes. Yeah, okay. Lisa says, do you pin your zips? Um, that can cause warping. I use clips or wash away wonder tape. Oh, it sounds like Lisa was uh, commenting to Dalva's question, perhaps. Great comment about the pins, Lisa. So what I find with zippers and pins is when you pin a zipper in place, uh, because the pins have to go in and out the fabric, they tend to make the, the fabric look wavy and it looks wavy. If it looks wavy when it's pinned, it'll also look wavy when you take the pins out and you finish sewing. So. Lisa's comment, uh, definitely agree with. Either use the Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape to hold your zipper in place. Um, if it's an area that the Wonder Clips can't reach or if the zipper is in an area where the Wonder Clips can reach, just use Wonder Clips. Um, Alicia says, any idea when you will be getting your black vinyl in stock? Um, we just got it before the weekend. Let me check downstairs. I think we did cut some before the weekend. I probably just needed to list it back up on the website. Um, so I'll check on that after the show and see what the situation is with the black glitter vinyl. Sharon says, what is the best marking pencil do you use that iron that irons off? So I feel like uh, because I really love my notions, I use several different marking tools for marking. So. When I'm cutting out fabric or marking on the wrong side of the fabric, I, I like using friction pens and I have these in all sorts of colors. I have orange, pink, blue, purple, so that I can manage both light and dark fabrics. If I'm working with a black fabric, which I was the other day, um, let me find it if I have it over here. I like the either the Clover Choco, which this is white chalk that just brushes off. I would not recommend the other Clover Choco colors. They have pink, blue, silver, and yellow. I've had really bad luck with those not brushing off. And let me see if I have my other tool over here also. Um, I, don't, I can't find the tool like last minute, but I like the Soline Pencil Trio also. It comes with pencil lead that's white, pink, and black. I use the white most often, but this is also good in addition to the Choco for marking on any areas of the bag that you'll see in the finished bag, the right side of the fabric. Um, I would steer clear of marking on the right side of the fabric or areas that you can see in the finished bag with the friction pens because sometimes those leave kind of like a little white ghostly line or sometimes they even come back um, in cold weather. Um, so try to stick with chalk for the right side of your fabric. Debbie says, have you ever demonstrated how to use a hump jumper? I was trying to explain its use to another bag lady. So I, th I think I did show it on the show. I'm not, sh I, I believe I did not sew with it live just because for our live shows, we don't have um, our extra camera that I normally use for my sewing machine. And plus I don't usually have my sewing machine on the table, but I did definitely show it on one of the live shows. Um, let me see, I'll check after the show and see if I can find the date of that show. I believe it was sometime last year. All right, are you, are you calling on the questions, Danny? All right, uh, Danny's calling in on the questions, so I apologize if I did not get to your question live. We'll be back again next Sunday. Danny will be joining me on the show next Sunday and we'll be talk, chatting and answering some more questions. 
Um, the giveaway for this week is a $40 gift certificate to my website, just in case you were thinking of picking up the latest four pack video bundle. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is to comment right now on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you watch the show. And I'll choose one, one randomly drawn winner before the end of the day this Saturday and announce the winner on next Sunday's show. And my um, giveaway question is, what is your favorite dessert? So I love tons of desserts. Um, my favorite that I've had recently is a chocolate bun cake. There's a store called Nothing Bun Cakes and they have a chocolate bun cake with chocolate chips and cream cheese frosting. And I found the recipe online for something very, very, very similar. And so that's probably my latest favorite, but um, I love all the desserts. I'll have them all. All right, so thank you so much for watching Social Sunday. I'll see you again next Sunday. Have a great week and happy sewing. Bye, everybody.